Remember the experimental subspace drive that science ships have and thinking by yourself, you know what, it'd be really cool if I could do this with every single one of my ships, but currently you can't? Well, have no fear, because we're introducing quantum catapults. Now you may ask yourself the question, what is a quantum catapult? Catapult. Well, Quantum Catapult is a brand new megastructure that you can build around a neutron star or a pulsar. And essentially, you can use it to yeet your entire fleets across space in order to deploy your fleets in places that previously they couldn't. Now, of course, the Quantum Catapult, similar to any other megastructures, comes in several levels. It reminds me quite a lot of the Panopticon, which basically allows you to see things at certain ranges, and when you max it out, you can see everything in the galaxy. Similarly, the Quantum Catapult has levels that allow you to increase its accuracy as well of its range. Essentially, what happens is... You send a fleet to be shot across space and you get a nice radical which basically says hey we can launch your fleet in this general direction and it will arrive in one of these systems. Essentially you have a shotgun that you can use to shoot your fleets across space. Now of course as you upgrade this megastructure it will become more accurate and of course have a longer range. It's very similar in its sub in terms of portals, except it feels to be very much one directional. Also, when you drop, you don't have any FTL cooldown or jump drive cooldown, so you can deploy your fleets immediately. This is a very interesting approach because essentially what you can do is, is you can reinforce fleets across the galaxy incredibly effectively even before gateways are a thing or if you don't have access to a certain area. So gateways themselves may still be incredibly useful from a logistical or strategic point of view. Quantum gateways, on the other hand, may actually be the new FTL type of technology that we've been looking for in order to make the game more interesting. And I'm really looking forward to see how this is going to change the overall logistical side of the warfare game. Which brings us to the next mega structure, or at least the quasi mega structure, because for this one, you will not need mega engineering. No, of course, we are talking about orbital rings, a system that has already been explored significantly throughout sci-fi but also throughout Stellaris mods. There is tons of mods out there that add orbital rings and it's really nice to see that they've finally been added to the game in a more quantifiable way so that you can play them out of the box without having to rely on modders to update their mods whenever they need them. Regardless, an orbital ring will cost you 50 influence and 1000 alloys and will take about two to three years to construct and essentially it's a variant of a star base. It works in a very similar way where you have modules that you can attach to this particular ring which then will either give bonuses to the underlying planet or become a defensive structure which by itself is rather cool to a certain degree they kind of work like habitats in that way except you know you cannot land any pops on them but they're still a pre mega engineering mega structure which is rather cool regardless of that your Orbital Ring will have upgrades very similarly to star bases in that sense, and you can upgrade slowly over time. And as you get additional star base technologies, similarly to star bases themselves, whether or not this is things like Citadel or Starhold, etc., you can upgrade things slowly over time, up to four modules and two additional buildings. Now, buildings themselves can be incredibly powerful. We've got ourselves such things as habitational modules, which adds additional districts down on the planet. If you have a small small planet and you've already run something like mastery of nature and you've already gotten max districts out of it then adding this would be a very good way to go optimally probably not but there's other ways of dealing with it as well orbital shipyard adds additional uh, shipyard capacity pretty standard stuff for starbase orbital anchorage same story there planetary defense guns uh, all pretty straightforward here, uh, all the way up to planetary defense batteries, etc. But the real meat and potatoes of this thing are the planet side building bonuses that you can get. Such as the low gravity mega refineries, which increases minerals from all miners on that planet by plus two. So if you have a planet that is super focused on, say, mineral production, this is a massive boon because you can essentially increase your production by x amount depending of course what the output is and i really really like that and at a cost of some moats 
totally worthwhile. And especially if you consider the planetary ascension in addition to uh, planetary designations, you can go completely insane with the type of bonuses you have. And in addition to that, I'm really thinking that um, Prospectoria, the special uh, Vassal type, can really run away with these sort of things, such as also stratospheric uh, ionization elements, which increases energy production. We got a food production version. We got one that boosts amenities on the planet. Uh, one for hive minds as well, maintenance drones, unity production. If you have a planet full of bureaucrats, then you will want to build an orbital filing system. Orbital logistics systems, which improves consumer goods production at a cost of minerals, but you can balance that, of course, with another orbital ring in a different system or in the same system even to balance things out. Alloy processing facilities, alloys from metallurgists plus one on an alloy world or even say, I don't know, an ecumenopolis sounds absolutely insane to me. Orbital rings, I think, are a great way to expand the game. And of course, we've seen iterations of this in mods already, etc. But seeing an official spin on things is rather nice. In addition to that, it gives a potential platform for even bigger things down the line. In addition to that, you can essentially build gigantic bastions throughout your system that make, well, I don't want to say that it makes the gigastructures Maginot line look like uh, peanuts because that's most definitely not the case. But still having a highly defended system with tons of stations, habitats, etc. on a choke node would be really nice, of course, unless there is a quantum catapult that just overshoots that entire area, which would be highly unfortunate. Then, of course, in the last weeks, we talked a little bit about the new Vassal types. We've already talked about the um, Prospectorium as well as the Defensive type. Today, we're going to be talking about the Science version. So essentially what it does, is it's essentially very similar to all of the other Vassals. But this one in particular has a focus on technology, whilst not having the ability to generate all that much naval power. So they have an automatic reduction of naval capacity all the way up to 50% when they are maxed out on their specialization tiers but they do get a 40 percent bonus on science which is ridiculous especially if you add i don't know technocracy into the mix as well as materialists etc you can get some crazy bonuses here um, from this specialization it's pretty darn awesome you also have a chance of getting special technologies um technology boosts such as finding new resource or uh, resource caches etc more monthly science bonuses, some overlord bonuses, which has to do with the relay network, whatever that is. I would not be surprised that it has anything to do with the quantum catapults, as well as being able to recruit researchers from the Scholarium, etc. So there is a lot of really cool things that you can do here. However, the Scholarium by nature is not necessarily the most powerful um, type of empire because Tech rushing is still definitely a thing, but if you are forced to um, essentially sit back because your navy is tiny, then you're going to start to run into some serious problems. Similarly to the Bulwark, they also have their own special ship, which essentially reduces any, any ship in that system that is piloted by AI, so the type of contingency, robots, or anything with a AI networked uh, ship those ships will get a reduction in, say, accuracy, ship fire rate, and base speed. So if you are coming up the contingency or a determined exterminator or anything like that, you will want one of these ships within your fleet in order to reduce their effectiveness. Which by itself is cool. Is it as cool as the, the, uh, the new Bulwark ship? I don't think so, but still very, very nice. And it does kind of synergize quite nicely, forcing your Vassal to send science ships with you. But it also makes the multiplayer aspect of the synergies uh, a lot more interesting. Though there's also such things as specialist holdings. They're very similar to the Overlord holdings themselves, but they are more focused on their vassals. So for instance, the Prospectoria can have a off-world foundry where essentially the Overlord will get alloys instead of the, um, the Prospectorium. The Bulwark and it can get more defense platforms, essentially. It's not all that great, but uh, yeah, then the uh, 
Vassal will not get that many alloys. And finally, a Ministry of Science for the Scholarium, where essentially the Overlord will get additional research speed at a cost of monthly loyalty. And once again, the loyalty system is in place because if you have low loyalty, then those Vassals may revolt down the line. There's also additional holdings, such as the Tree of Life Sapling, which is a... Well, it's the Tree of Life origin. What, what can we say here? Uh, essentially you will get additional food. That's essentially what that means, uh, which is kind of nice. But yeah, that's essentially it when it comes to the additional holdings. Finally, there is a galactic community. There is new directives being added here. And essentially what we're looking on here is a lot of subjugation focused stuff. So what we're looking at here is things like the brand new intergalactic directives set up where essentially you can change monthly loyalty but empires will also be increased in size or at least the amount of stuff that they can support which has all sorts of knock-on um, results such as i don't know your edict pool etc a regulated growth very similar you get another loyalty buff but you will get an empire size uh, modifier by systems and planets and then finally all the way up uh, this gets even crazier there's also bureaucratic surveillance, which is essentially a new galactic community goal for overlords in general. And essentially what it means is, is that subjects will have higher bonuses towards the overlord, specifically ethics attraction, which I think is rather interesting. You don't want to differentiate between your ethics and your overlord because it will just change loyalty all that much. But also upgraded levels where uh, essentially you can have free holdings that don't need to be negotiated in the holdings contract which i think is rather cool independent system sensors as well as a thing so the overlord can essentially integrate these empires more effectively without directly integrating them through the integration diplomacy setup and that always already has knock-on effects all the way through uh, having free holdings up to two within the empire as well as uh, not having the uh, other vassals giving them the ability to have having independent diplomacy, etc. So more and more integration, let's call it high crown authority, so to speak, um, that can be added slowly over time. But that's everything we're going to be talking about today. What do you think? Quantum catapults? Orbital rings? Are these cool things? I like, think, I like to think they're cool things. I think the quantum catapult by itself could be very, very interesting. Orbital rings, to me, feel like an extension of the... Um, planetary ascension system which I'm not sure whether or not that is a good idea or not I kind of feel that planetary ascension should be part of these rings but what do you think uh, let me don't know down in the comments below and then uh, we'll see what we can discuss in the meantime we're going to wrap things up here next time we're going to be talking about the new origin which is the teacher of the shroud and see what sort of uh, mysteries the shroud has for us thank you so much for watching and until next time and thank you to my patrons take good care of yourselves and as always each other